<sighs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Piano Lessons with Elvin, episode 17. Today, I'm finally going to do the first of probably three or four videos on how to read sheet music. Um, so yeah, I th hope you appreciate this. This is going to be part one on treble clef, and I'm going to try to be fairly extensive about it. Um, so I hope, hope you guys enjoy this. I'm just going to grab the camera. Okay. So I wrote some stuff down here and I've been teaching how to read sheet music for, you know, like 18 years or so. So this is to me one of the best ways to go about this. Um, how to read notes, part one, treble tr tr clef. So to me, what I want to point out is these five lines in mu music, there's always five lines, four spaces in each clef. I'm going to just uh, refer to a kid book here, which I'll just be referring to on and off here. So here we go. Treble clef, bass clef. We'll worry about bass clef later. Treble, treble clef, a.k.a. And this to me is a very great tip to read notes. This is also called G clef. If you look at it, it looks like a fan fancy G here. I even drew an example here. You can kind of see the per permutation of it throughout the centuries, I'd say, starting with the uh, Gregorian chant, which was some of, you know, in the 6th to 8th cent century, some of the first recorded sheet music. Over time, these clefs will slowly get developed. Now, it's called G clef because in the belly of the G clef is G. You know, we could also call it treble clef, but you know, in one way, all you need to know is one note, and then you count up or down to get to everything else. But we'll get to that in a second. So this note here, G clef, treble, treble clef is G. We got five lines, four spaces to read music. There's the four spaces here. Now, you've probably heard this back in grade school. For the five lines, we got every good boy deserves fudge. You could come up with other ones. I've heard elves gather bountiful, delicious fruit. Every good boy does fine. What's one other one that's fun? Um, every girl bakes dead fish. <laughs> I remember making that up in uh, in school. And then spaces here, spaces spelled face. So these acronyms can be helpful or they can convolute things. There's re really, I'm going to show you like maybe three methods to read notes and preferably it becomes a compilation of all three of these in the really, in essence, becomes a all roads lead to Rome situation here. So just with this right here, knowing these facts, five lines, every good boy deserves fudge, four spaces, space is spelled face. Um, we got this G here in the middle for G clef. You should already be able to just read all notes. Now, one ca caveat here, I'm only dealing with notes within the staff, within the five lines and four spaces. There's going to be a bunch of notes that go way, way, way higher and way, way, way lower, which we call ledger lines. But for now, we're just going to deal with this great start starting point, and it'll co cover about an octave-ish on the piano, which I'll show in a second. So... One other thing I want to point out, actually, I'll show you now, is these five lines and four spaces cover this range on the piano. So if we look at middle C, oh, let me turn the volume up, apologies. So if we look at mid middle C right here, the five lines of treble clef cover these notes here. Every good boy deserves fudge so there's the five lines then in between them are the spaces spaces spell face f a c e if you could see that there let me just cool so there's face there's the lines every good boy deserves fudge so when we're reading treble clef everything within the staff with the five lines and four spaces encompasses this range now if i zoom out a bit you'll see that it's not that big of a range here but it's a good great starting point especially with the first songs we'll be doing here so that is what the five lines and four spaces entail and then i'm going to add two more here because they're very common mid middle c which is really the first note everyone learned one of the first notes you read middle c then d and then we get to the staff up here now when i write middle c i want to draw the comparison that when we read sheet music it's always just going to be line space, line space, line space, ad infinitum until we get to the end here. So even when, here I'll go down here, I wrote some little 
quizzes for us. So even when we go low, lower, we keep this um, concept going. So it's like line, space, line. Next one would be a space. So we got this bottom line, every good boy deserves fudge. So every here. So we go one right below every, A, B, C, D. So we get a D and it's line space. And then below that, we get another line, hence why I draw this line through it. And that would be the middle C. Now I could keep going here and then next up would be a space. So one right below C would be this B. It's funny to write through a phone. <laughs> Um, so that would be B and then it's set to rough. I wanted to draw one more here. The next one would be a line. I'm trying to draw it in the middle there. My handwriting blue. So you can kind of see this progression of, you know, here is space, line, space, line, space, line, etc. And it just keeps going down. So the main juxtaposition here for me, or that's the wrong word. Uh, we have middle C here upward. And I like to include one more note right above F. Every good boy deserves fudge. Here's F right above it, G, because we tend to see this relatively early on in this. So we have a few notes that are outside of the staff, but very common in the initial stages. Middle C, D, and then we have E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So with that sum total of notes, that'll cover this middle C. Let me get the volume back on again. Middle C here, all the way to that G. I feel like the focus is weird today. Um, so, middle C to this G. And this is a, quite a nice range to begin with here. Now, with these knowledge, oh man, it's bad English. With this knowledge here, um, I wanna show one other method here, which some will call the guidepost note method here, which is, I, I chose three that is pre pretty common with my students for them to recall and this can help when you don't really want to consider the acronym. So one note to, to uh, put in your mind for all time is mid, mid, middle C looks like this. If it's written, if it's in trouble clef and it looks like this, this is mid, middle C. It won't ever not be middle C, at least for now. There's a couple of things you could do to spice it up. But commit this to memory. Anything written in this location pertains to the same location on the piano. Middle C there, middle C here. Now, another great guidepost note is this G, and that's the easy one because treble clef, aka G clef, you can always refer to in the big bell belly is G. Cool, so that's the easy one you can always recall. And then one other one I like to do is F on the top line here, just because now, now we have one that covers the sort of bottom half of tre treble clef, C to G, Then we got G covering the middle range, and then we got F and that eventually, you know, top range, and then it'll go beyond to notes higher than it. And if you can just even commit these three as your guidepost notes, middle C, treble G, some will call it in this F up here, that's great. Or we could always, and this is the all roads lead to Rome concept, where we could think every good boy deserves fudge, space is spelled face, F-A-C-E. And that can give you a combo here. Let's say with this note in particular, you can go, okay, well, this is a G clef that's on the second line. Great, it's G. Or you could have considered every good, and you'll get the G. Or you could have thought spaces, F, A, what's between an F and an A, a G. Here's an F for face, one above an F's a G. We could even have counted up from middle C. Not efficient, but it would still work. C, D, E, F, G, boom. So you get that note here many different ways. Now, here's a little quiz here, and I would like... Maybe you could just pause the video and come up with these notes on your own. Um, like a little uh, homework assignment in school. <laughs> so now, I mean, just to kind of jump into it. Here, space is spelled face, so I'll use, this will be a C. What do I got here? F is the one of those good guide po post notes. If I'm confused, I knew this was a C, so I could count up C, D, E, F. Or I could have done the lines, every good boy deserves fudge. Or even one other method, space is spelled face, F-A-C-E. What's one note above E? Jump F, and we get there. Here we go, G, we could have thought G clef in the belly. Or once again, every good. To get there, you could count down from a note prior that you have. Let's do this one here, this will be a E. This one here, every good boy deserves, so that's a D here. 
then we got this E here for a space note. Space is spelled face, F-A-C-E. We could have also just counted up one from this D. D, up one to E. Then let's count down from this E. E, D, C, B, A. So now we get an A for that note, or we could have done space is spelled face, F-A, or even every good, good for that second line. We always know it's the second line of the G because tr tr treble clef, that belly's on G. And then one above G, A. Now here's that final note. We could have remembered that F is a nice guidepost note. And then we'll write above it, F, F, G. Or we could have just thought back to here again, space is spelled face, here's a E, count up E, F, G. I could be real inefficient, here's mid middle C, and I could count up a long way. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Cool, and I get it that way too. So I wanna show that you can be pretty flexible with this, and I love to expose all the notes on the main part of the staff at the beginning so you don't develop any unintentional bias where there's easy notes and hard notes. If you consider it briefly, there's not really any reason why reading F on the top line should be any more difficult than E on the bottom line. You know, every good board deserves fudge. They're all, they should be equal to read. But what tends to happen when you do standard method books, you know, like kid method books, is they sort of put these self-made shackles on you and they expose you to a very small range of keys and a very small range of hand position. So unintentionally, you get this bias developed on a few of the notes. Let's say lots of the first songs start on middle C position and they'll be C, D, E, F, G. So you get really good with reading five notes. And then through, this is kind of reminds me of Lion King where Mufasa's like, everything the light touches is great. Everything in the sh shadows is evil, don't go there. That kind of happens with these kid books where you play 50 million songs in one position Everything outside of that one position, middle C position, is scary. Like, the top line is way crazy. The top space, E, space is spelled face. No, don't do that yet. We'll read that note three years down the road. Here we learn it in a very unbiased approach. This is great. Develop that mental flexibility for yourself where you can just bounce around the all roads lead to Rome approach. And then you'll find that, you know, me playing this C... <laughs> What's funny with my piano? What am I doing here? I must have hit a funny switch. <laughs> We're just going to deal with a really weird sound. So, you know, here's mid, middle C. Here's that E. <laughs> what is... Okay, I don't know what I have this setting on. Space is spelled face. Here we go. Here's the every good boy deserves fudge. Not any harder for me to say middle C, F. Here's that E. Here's C. You know, here is that G in the middle of treble clef. It's all should be about the same difficulty. Now, one other point I want to make on this video is this method works for all types of songs. If I bring up this kid now, I don't like kid method books, but it still works for me to present these and not too scare every way. And we'll still learn from these kind of method books when I go through songs. But with that knowledge here, we should be able just to kind of pump through some of this. So what what do we got here? Okay, it's on the third line. Every good boy, B. Or I could have thought G's here. G, A, B. We got B, we got above a B, a C. What do we got here? One above a C, a D. Every good boy deserves D. There's a B. Here's space is spelled face, F, A. What do we got here? Every good boy deserves a D again. Going all the way down, we can remember here that's a G because of treble clef or G clef between there. And then, you know, we could go count one up high from G to get to that A, etc. here. We'll do bass clef down, down the road. But you can see how through this pro, I mean, if you could even just like screenshot this and just do it with yourself, read through all of the notes here and see how uh, quick you can go with it. And I wanted to show how even in very advanced works, the same concept work, you know, this law is uh, applicable for everything. Kind of like with a kid's book you know a kid's book still uses the same alphabet that you use for a advanced novel like um brothers karabatsov or uh whatever um so this is a very i mean this piece is awesome i'm uh rework working it. it's by list it's one of his uh paganini etudes but this same uh con concept works let's just look at this part here okay what is this note every good boy that will be a b it's what we call a b flat we don't have to worry about that now 
What about this note here? Okay, that's on a space. Space is spelled face. F-A-C-E. That's great. Let's just go to this other part here. Okay, what do we got here? Space is spelled face. F-A-C. Nice. Okay, what about, hmm, this note here? I look close. Okay, that's on a line. Every good boy deserves fudge. F, great. And I could also remember that F is a nice guidepost note. You know, I could even, I'm going to see if I can find a middle C off the top of my head. Do we see any middle Cs or friend? Here we go. Here's a middle C right here. Cool. And then, you know, if you know C, there was one right below a C, A, B, C. So this would be a B. What's right above a C, A, B, C, D. Then there's a D again, what we would call a D sharp. Now E, we could have known that's the E because we counted up. Or you could think about it as every good boy deserves fudge. Here's an F, space is spelled face. We could have known that's an E because you went one down, F to E. So I'm just showing you how flexible this is and how it works with everything. You know, there's a really wild uh, last page here that's re really fun to play, and it's the same thing. I mean, this is a, a bunch to read, but if I just look here, there's treble clef. What'll that be? Every, so that's the E, every good. You know, there's that G again in that big belly. What's right above a G? Oh, we'll go to an A. Boink. There's that A, or space is spelled face here. What do we got here? We got C and E. Space is spelled face, F-A-C-E. Cool. So, yeah, let me just put the phone back here to do some wrap-up thoughts. And, uh, yeah, I hope this uh, is angled right. But, yeah, so there's um pre pretty much, I hope that method just helped you to read Trouble Clef. It, throughout, I mean, I've been, te like I said, teaching for about 18 years maybe now, and I've had to teach how to read music millions of times with students as young as like five or six to even you know grown-up students in their 80s and this method really works for all of them and you can make huge strides because you don't limit yourself with these childish method books that constrict the amount of notes you're exposed to for far too long of a period um, with this approach everything within that staff is easily accessible immediately and when we start to do some songs which i'll work on and take you through song by song I like to do a bit on the kid books just to kind of build a little initial confidence. And then we'll just jump into classical works, you know, some very early uh, Mozart minuets or uh, keyboard pieces from uh, the 17th century. And those are nice because they're relatively physically easy, um, but they expose you to a big, big, bigger range of notes. So you develop that skill a lot quicker. And to me, one of the biggest reasons why people stop playing piano and stop pursuing music is they're very inefficient and slow at re reading notes so it's really quite a drag to play music because they'll go i love this song and then they'll spend eight months trying to read one page and they go oh my goodness there's eight pages left screw this so i hope this helps um and i hope this uh well you know the next video i'll do on bass clef so I appreciate everyone for all the subscribes and likes and have fun practicing. Be sure to comment and all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you all at the next lesson. Okay, peace.